Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. We're just having a bit of a giggle about one or two things. And, Kids uh, are all off doing their bedrooms at the moment, so we've yes. had five minutes. We have. Uh, we've and been trying we to do this all day, and it's been one of them days. It's been my birthday today. So happy She's birthday. three today. Three. Three. It's and three. Um, I've been trying to do things, and it's just, it's one of them days. Everything seems to have been against us, but we thought we'd grab five minutes, but we I can't did. exactly let you into the joke we've just been laughing no. about. No, no, no. But we've only no. just calmed down, no, so just, just, move just, on. just, yeah, we're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> why are we here today? Well, we thought we'd share something with you <clears throat> that, uh, uh, there is a, a very serious note to this that we'll yeah, come on to very now. very serious. Um, because all joking aside, that this is nothing to do with being funny. No. Um, so, but uh, what we're going to look at is uh, a little bit about racism. Hmm. And something that we noticed on the TV the other day yeah. that got us thinking about it. Hmm. And then we had another reminder from a magazine that was given to us by someone very close to us that managed to pick one up off the Satan racks mm -hmm. in our high street. Somebody's actually likened them to the old, um, uh, the, the old sandwich boards that they used to wear, but rather than they've reverted back to their old old origins, and we'll go on to origins properly in a yeah. moment. Rather than wearing them, they're just standing by these carts. It's kind of going back to their old ways, really. Yeah. Nothing new under the sun. There Recycled, isn't it? Recycled yeah, new marketing. New light in an old way. <laughs> Recycled marketing. Anyway, here we go. Yeah. So, what got us thinking about this was the uh, national. Um, Basketball Association, the NBA, and I think all of us are, are aware, even over here in this country, of the storm that's being kicked up in America mm. with regards to a chap called Sterling, who owns the Clippers, Clippers yeah. um, over there, and uh, some of his, uh, uh, shall we say, misgivings, things that he was suddenly saying that came out and came to light. And uh, what I've done is I've just gone through a Reuters report and just quoted one paragraph for it. And if I could just start off by reading this, and I quote, Sterling was banned from any further ties with his team or professional basketball and stripped of his seat on the NBA governing board. Days after two websites released audio recordings in which a voice said to be Sterling's is heard criticizing a female friend for associating with black people. Silver said Tuesday that Sterling has acknowledged to the NBA that the recording was authentic, but did not apologise. Mm. Right. Well, that's a whole other debate anyway, but it got us thinking. <laughs> and especially when we picked up, um, the, when we were given this particular magazine, uh, the Awake magazine, it's actually being peddled on the racks as we speak out there somewhere in the high streets near you, uh, April tw 2014. By the way, it is, if anybody's got uh, Google Vision, that they can do a vision... One of those Photoshop things yeah. where they can take a face and, and put it into the internet and see where it's from. Uh, I bet you. I wonder if this particular individual is a Jehovah's Witness. I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> I'd, I'd just be interested to know if anybody's out there that's got the technology for that. Mm. But anyway, on the back of this very interesting article... Uh, there is uh, this uh, called about racism mm. and underneath there it also talks about uh, what is the origin of the races of mankind racism origins racism origins so got us to thinking it did get us to thinking because obviously that's a massive issue that um, has been spread throughout the ages of um, racism and, and things like that. But the society, you see, would like you to believe that they have been stood out from the crowd from from the back when they were originally started up um, as Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, right back beyond. They, they've always stood neutral in the respect to um, racism. They stay on that we don't have that in our organisation, we don't do this, we don't do that. They like to look as if they're squeaky clean, as it yeah. were, when yeah. it comes to that. Or have you believe that the, because they're Jehovah's uh, God's appointed organisation here on the earth, that, that they are the, the ones to follow as an example in the way they view each pe everybody that's in the organisation and everybody mm. throughout the world. So we decided to, the fact that they've released this article saying about the origins of racism, we decided to look into their origins 
of racism and how they felt about it going back because obviously they're making out that they've never been racist. Well, they'd certainly like to bury that thought if anybody had an inkling that, uh, that the origins of the Watchtower were of a racist inclination. Mm. This might come as quite a surprise to a many uh, Jehovah's Witness that might be watching this mm. uh, in the near future. And also, if we keep this on archive for many years to come, there, it shouldn't be as a, a surprise to realise that you can see why the Watchtower want all of the old publications buried and buried deeply. Mm. But unfortunately for them, and fortunately for the rest of us, uh, these, these archives are out there and they're readily available to anybody that wants to get their hands on them and just have a gander, have a good read through of the history of the Watchtower Society. And we're not just talking about racism, we're no. talking about every, every single, single vestige yeah. of this organisation. You would not recognise this no. religion. See, we, we, why we say these things is because um, growing up, I never knew the origins of certain no. things within the Watchtower. You basically grow up with your generation's knowledge. Yeah. Um, you don't get the background knowledge. Only little bits, for example, they'll use the example of people in the concentration camps. So they'll go back as far as the origins of, you know, 1920s, you know, when the wars were on and people were being put into concentration camps. They'll go back when they oh. need to, to pick out certain bits they want to focus on. But if you're going to really analyse the absolute from back then, you might as well look at all of it yeah. through the fact that they celebrated Christmas, people were allowed blood transfusions, all these different things that they aren't allowed to do now, which they were doing back then. They'll point out, as I say, how you know people were dying for the faith in the concentration camps, but those people were also the ones that were celebrating Christmas, that were doing all these things that witnesses today don't do. So I don't understand why they would pick out the bits they want to, but mm. not focus on all of it. So they nitpick, don't they? They do nitpick, and what they do is they whitewash everything in their history. They airbrush it, as we call it today. Um, which on a computer is, is exactly what you do. When you have a picture of something, you perfect the picture and you get rid of all the blemishes. Mm. And uh, when it comes to the Watchtower history, that's exactly what they do. They have been airbrushing their history for a very long time yes. now. Yeah. I don't think the quotes that we're about to read will be found in the Proclaimers book, for instance. They won't be in there for obvious reasons, because they're ashamed of their past. It's like the same thing with regards to um, Jehovah's name, for example, about how a Spanish monk in the old book, before the Proclaimers book came in, and before the Insight books, it, it was the old concordance. The, uh, no, no the eight, 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 Bible Understanding. Bible Understanding, the blue one. Yeah. talks about the origin of the, of the name Jehovah and where that came from, and it yeah. was a Spanish monk. Well, that his name is Rome, 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 uh, Romendus. Romendus or something. Romendus, yeah. Anyway, and, but it, anyway you can it look it up if you've got the aid to a Bible understanding. Look up the word Jehovah, and you'll see it in there. But mm. the new books haven't got any of that information in. No. Now, no. why? Because people would like to think that you know that they try and convince you that it's a biblical name. It's this, but you know, even though the vowels didn't mm. didn't exist, they will have you believe that they did. Mm. But anyway, they try and bury where they originally get these informa this information from because it, it upholds their doctrines and their beliefs. Mm. And they twist it to their own... They certainly do. ...viewpoint. Right. We apologise if this is actually going to upset anybody. Yeah, this isn't our words. These this are not our words. This is purely to show how contradictory they really are and how corrupt they are. Yeah. You read there that this is talking about the origins of racism in here. Well, you haven't read it, but believe me, this is talking about what they think is the standard. And they would have you believe now that they are now setting the standard. Arguably, they are. But even then, we can come on to a question regarding that, with regards to equality of all races within the Watchtower. <clears throat> but let's go back to their history, because this is the sort of thing that they don't want you to see. If you want to look this information up, you go to jwfacts. Dot com. Love that site. Just go on there, look under famous <laughs> quotes, and then as you go down the subtitles there, you'll see racism, and you can see for yourself exactly what we're talking about. And as all true good apostates are, we will always refer everybody back to the Watchtower's own literature. Absolutely. It's not our wording. No. Okay? So here we go. And this is uh, really just to give you some examples. There are others. But for the sake of timing on this video, we're not going to go into all of it. 
But we'll start with the 1902 Watchtower, uh, July 15, and the title is this, The Negro, Not a Beast. Okay, and it quotes, While it is true that the white race exhibits some qualities of superiority over any other, their words. We can go down a bit further. Let's start from... They're talking about Noah and... The secret of greater intelligence. Why don't we start from there? Yeah, the secret of the greater intelligence and aptitude of the Caucasian, undoubtedly in great measure, is attributed to the comingly of blood amongst its various branches and this was evidently forced in large measure by circumstances under divine control. Noah declared prophetically that Ham Ham's characteristics which had led him to unseemly conduct disrespectful to his father would be found cropping out later inherited by his son and prophetically he foretold that this degeneracy would mark the posterity of Canaan degraded him making him servile we are not able to determine to a certainty that the sons of Ham and Canaan are the Negroes but we consider that general view as probable as any other. Okay, let's read on a bit further. I've got a quote underneath that that says this, from my experience with these hybrids, I believe that when the earth shall yield its increase, it will come along different lines than the crossing of plants. Large fruits can be raised by crossing, but not always of value. Even in the case of the human family, if the father and mother are of different races, the children are sometimes unfit for brain work. Wonderful are the fixed laws of God. From their literature this is. This is from their literature. A golden age. Oh, it certainly was. Uh, 1919. Wasn't that the year that they were approved? That's right. That's These right. ones are now chosen by God. Yeah. You know, God has approved the organisation of you know Jehovah's Witnesses as his people. Let's read on. From a criminal viewpoint, the desirability of sobering the southern Negro speaks volumes for national prohibition. Bible verses, evolution book, page 30. God has specially blessed and favoured certain branches of the Aryan race in Europe and America. He's favoured them. <laughs> but the fact that the white race has been more abundantly blessed with the light of the gospel than others, <laughs> is it not to be understood to signify that when members of other races heard and appreciated the gospel, they were repulsed or rejected by the Lord? while the elect church will probably be composed chiefly of the highly favoured white race, nevertheless, it will probably have in it representatives out of every kindred, people and tongue. Probably. Now, have I got this right or have I got this wrong? But back in Pentecost 33 CE, when the Holy Spirit um, went down on the, the people in the yeah, room... Yeah, yeah. They started speaking in lots of different languages. For all sorts, yeah. And they went off in different, different parts yeah. of the land. Not one of, you know, no. they were all treated exactly the same. All human beings through the gospel were the same. And Look they all at the, went Ethi the Ethiopian eunuch. Yeah. Look exactly what's going on there. Yeah. Uh, this guy, as soon as he read the gospel from he Isaiah. He wanted to get baptised. He wanted to get baptised and he was baptised immediately. It had nothing to do with the colour of his skin. No. And, you, and I mean, at the end of the day, we're all part of the human race. We're all exactly, exactly the same, yeah. regardless of how height, how tall we are, how short we are, whether we've got four limbs, no limbs, uh, one eye, two eyes, two ears, one nose. You know, it, it doesn't... It, well, it's all hope we've got one nose, darling. I've got one nose, not I, two noses. I think noses. if I saw someone with two noses, I might have a very different view of them. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. The watched has full of brown noses. <laughs> but anyway, Any, yeah. um, at the end of the day, we're all part of the same family. Mm. And it doesn't matter what colour, what race you are, we are all from the same family. Now, the Watchtower would, would have you agree, would, would agree with that. 
and and that's exactly what they're actually promoting in this magazine yeah, here. Yeah. But this particular literary, uh, literary uh, uh, shows very clearly that that's not what they thought earlier on. Mm. And of course, if you go back through the Christian Greek scriptures, you can see quite clearly that there was neutrality through the Gospels. Absolutely. That's exactly what it was about. Yeah. It had nothing to do with colour. No. So this is coming 2,000 years later. Mm. Let's read this last quote because of timing. But Golden Age, 1929. So this is 10 years after they've been established as God's earthly child. Chosen people. July 24, page 702. And it says this, quote, is there anything in the Bible that reveals the origin of the Negro? It is generally believed that the curse which Noah pronounced upon Canaan was the origin of the black race. Certain it is that when Noah said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall be he be unto his brethren. He pictured the future of the coloured race. That's what they're saying. They have been and are a race of servants. There is no servant in the world as good as a good coloured servant. It's ridiculous. And the joy that he gets, that he gets from rendering faithful servant service is one of the purest joys there is in the world. No, I, um, I have trouble reading that. Yeah. There's lots more to it. Um, we only printed off a little bit, but if you go on to jwfacts.com and put in the, about the, the, the origin of race, um, uh, there's a lot more. I mean, for example, about sharing um, kingdom halls, they were told to the black people, they, they felt they were doing well because they told the black race to go and sit in the in the balcony area so they weren't mixing yeah the drama it was that's right the, the drama the, the video they, drama that they did at the time the picture drama that because there were a lot of um uh black brothers and sisters coming into the congregations at that time mm. it was starting to become proportionate disproportionate to the whites mm. and it's actually written there within the uh, watchtower literature that in order to satisfy the the uh black brothers they put them up in the balcony, yeah. out the way. It's a fascinating it's, read. It really is. Uh, and it's extremely disturbing. But it shows, it exposes them for who they truly are, in the sense they, they, are, they were no different, because there was an awful lot of, obviously, um, throughout the, the years, there's always been um, a few people that have taken the wrong view of skin colour mm. and that's always going to be the case because there is you know there's a lot more how can I put it different ways of viewpoints now in this generation because everybody's a lot more um, understanding in the sense of understanding that we all are literally from the same family mm. but there's there's a lot of prejudice that will never ever go mm. and and that's down to individuals but but with regards to the Watchtower Bible and Track Society they would have you believe that it's never existed within their organization because of being the chosen race as they call themselves mm. They were never racist. They were never racist. But there is no servant in the world as good as a good coloured servant, and the joy that he gets from rendering faithful servant service is one of the purest joys there is in the world. In other words, that's exactly what they're fit for and nothing else. That's what the Watchtower would have you believe. Yeah. And yet, here it is in their latest magazines, and this is something I will agree with. And at last they've got it right. And it says this, what the experts say, and guess what they're quoting? <laughs> The United Nations. Mm. <laughs> the, Interesting, the that, isn't it? The, <laughs> the wild beast. You see, you can't write this stuff, can you? They condemn it for decades, and now they're quoting the United Nations. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization states that all human beings belong to a single species and are descended from a common stock. This is the Declaration on Race and Racial uh, Prejudice, 1978. They got that bit right. Yeah, well but it's because done, they're not quotes, they're not making that up. They're quoting, quoting someone, someone else. Yeah, exactly. And and whenever they quote someone else, they always nitpick bits to suit them. Mm. But you see, if somebody starts quoting them like we are, 
we're called apostates yeah. and we're called um you know evil apostates because we're, we're we're apparently making stuff up but actually we're not we're well, just yeah. reading your literature so there's nothing made up there and we're certainly not drawing people to ourselves as they no. would have you believe and we're not no. mentally diseased we're just reading the literature that apparently was actually sanctioned by God himself yeah. in 1919. So uh, make for that what you will. What we're trying to get from this video is not to upset anybody. We no. certainly don't want to do that and uh, not to antagonize anything. We, uh, everybody knows exactly what we feel about this stuff anyway. Mm. But the important thing is for is to, the message is to get, the, get your research out there. If you're not sure about something, start asking people, where can I go to get exactly. it? And look for those websites that will show you watchtower literature the truth and the what truth. they were saying about certain things at a certain time the stuff that they just want to bury and can i go back to one thing please right back at the beginning we were looking at this chap called sterling mm. and it said there uh, that he's acknowledged to the nba that the recording was authentic but he didn't did not apologize and and what i would say is that with all these comments that they have made through the years um about they racism. It. They don't apologise. Have they ever apologised no. for the terrible things, the terrible, terrible racism that they've um, promoted through those magazines back then? Mm -hmm. Have they ever sat down and just written out a, a formal apology to everybody to say, we're so sorry, we got this completely wrong? Mm. Have they ever done that? No. So you have to ask yourself a very important question. Why have they never apologised for those racist comments. Mm. And that is something that all of us have to really deeply think about for a minute there. Mm. Why have they not apologized for being racist in the early 1900s? Mm. Because they don't want you to know about it. They would rather bury it yeah. than apologize. And that's that's the point. They, there's no admittance there no. of guilt no. or, or, or anything. They just would rather not anyone know about it, which so, isn't gonna happen because we're out here to speak loud and proud. The next time you're being, you've done something wrong and you're in a kingdom hall and the elders are pulling you in over a judicial meeting, <laughs> yeah. think about this stuff yeah, and exactly. think about how the organisation has, has, has it repented over its acts from the past? Mm. No, it certainly hasn't. So by its own definition, it stays disfellowshipped. Would you agree? Absolutely. Thank you for listening and we shall go now. We shall go. Okay, bye for now. See you later. Bye.